السلام علیکم خاطر حضرات میں ہوں اسرار احمد کسانہ یہ جو پروگرام ہے یہ ہم کر رہے ہیں جموں اینڈ کشمیر کے حوالے سے آپ کو پتہ ہے کہ پچھلے دنوں میں ٹیوزڈے کو آپ کو پتہ ہے ٹوینٹی سیونتھ اکٹوبر جس دن بلیک ڈے منایا جا رہا تھا کشمیریوں کی طرف سے اور پاکستان میں بھی بلیک ڈے منایا جا رہا تھا ایک تو یہ کام ہوا کہ وہاں پہ پاکستان میں صبح سرحد جس کو ہم کے پی کے آج کل کہتے ہیں اس میں دھماکہ ہوا پشاور کے اندر اور وہ بھی مدرسے کے اوپر دھماکہ ہوا اس دن بلیک ڈے انہوں نے ہمارا وہاں پہ کر دیا اب یہ دیکھیے کہ اسی دن جو بھارتی حکومت ہے اس نے ایک ایسا قانون جاری کیا جس کو لینڈ گریپ کہہ رہے ہیں جس کے متعلق کشمیر جو ہے وہ اب فور سیل ہو گیا ہوا ہے کہ جو چاہے کشمیر جموں کشمیر جا کے لینڈ خرید سکتا ہے اور اپنا وہاں پہ سلسلہ کر سکتا ہے اور اس کو کوئی روک ٹوک نہیں ہوگی اب یہ جو صورتحال ہے اس کا بہت بڑا امپیکٹ ہوا ہے ایک تو لوگوں نے ڈکرائی کیا ہے اس کو کہ یہ ایک لینڈ گریپ ہے اور دوسرا یہ ہے کہ کل بہت بڑی ہڑتال ہوئی ہے جموں کشمیر کے اندر اور حریت کی کال کے اوپر کمپلیٹ شٹ ڈاؤن ہوا ہے کشمیر کے حوالے سے اور سری نگر میں تمام بزنسز تمام جو ٹریفک تھی وہ بند رہی اور ساتھ ساتھ آپ دیکھیں گے نارتھ کشمیر جو ہے نارتھ کشمیر کے علاقے جو ہیں سوپور بارہ مولا کپواڑا اور ہندواڑا بانڈی پور جو ہے یہ سارے کے سارے جو ہیں یہ بند رہے ہیں پھر کمپلیٹ شٹ ڈاؤن ہم نے دیکھا ہے جو کہ ساؤتھ کشمیر میں ہوا ہے یعنی شوپیاں میں کلگام میں اننت ناگ وغیرہ جو پلوامہ اور پامپور وغیرہ کے جو علاقے ہیں وہاں پہ بھی کمپلیٹ شٹ ڈاؤن ہوا تو یہ ایک حریت کا پہلا جو کال ہوئی ہے اگست جو ہوا تھا پچھلے سال میں جو واقعہ ہوا تھا جس میں 370 سیونٹی اور تھرٹی فائیو اے کو سکریپ کیا گیا تھا اس کے بعد یہ پہلی کال تھی اور یہ سب سے بہت بڑی کامیاب کال ہوئی ہے اس کا کیا امپیکٹ ہو رہا ہے اس کا وہاں پہ کشمیری جو ہیں وہ کیا سوچ رہے ہیں اس کو جانچنے کے لیے ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہیں جناب ڈاکٹر راجیو کمار صاحب اور یہ جرمنی میں ہوتے ہیں اور جرمنی میں پروفیسر ہیں پڑھاتے ہیں وہاں پہ ہائیڈلبرگ یونیورسٹی میں ان سے بات کرتے ہیں اور ان سے پوچھتے ہیں کہ وہ اس کو کس نظر سے دیکھ رہے ہیں جناب ڈاکٹر راجیو صاحب گڈ مارننگ گڈ مارننگ راجیو بھائی یہ ذرا مجھے بتائیں کہ یہ جو صورتحال آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں یہ کیوں ہوئی ہے کیوں اس کو کشمیریز جو ہیں اتنے بڑے لیول پہ انہوں نے اس کو ریجیکٹ کیا ہے اس کے باوجود دی گورنمنٹ آف انڈیا ڈسائڈیڈ ٹو گو اہیڈ ود اٹ تو واٹ از دا ریزن بہائنڈ اٹ واٹ از ریشنل بہائنڈ اٹ نہیں اس میں یہ دیکھیے دیر از نتھنگ سرپرائزنگ اباؤٹ اٹ جو انڈیا گورنمنٹ نے شروع کیا تھا اگست فائیو ٹو تھاؤزینڈ نائنٹین میں اس میں جو دیٹ واز دس جو اس کو کہا انہوں نے دس واٹ کال دس دس ری آرگنائزیشن ایکٹ تو اسی وقت انہوں نے ایک اور ایکٹ بھی پاس کیا پارلیمنٹ میں سو دیٹ واز کال جموں اینڈ کشمیر ری آرگنائزیشن ایکٹ ٹھیک سو اور اس ایکٹ کے اندر they could bring uh, any change in the stru- any structural change in the Jammu and Kashmir hmm. within one year. Take. And uh, that uh, one year would have, uh, that one year ended on October 31, Take. yesterday. Hmm. And within, uh, 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 when they would bring any change under that act, they didn't have to go to parliament for its approval. Achha. So that is why they were in a hurry to bring in this act so that, and it's not only this act, there mm. have been so many acts, there have been hundreds of acts they have passed. Oh. So one was they, they abrogated the requirement of this, uh, or uh, they uh, abrogated the uh, stringent requirements for being a state subject. Virtually that uh, the state subject law has been abrogated. So now what they have done is that they have, uh, they passed this, uh, they made this new uh, uh, law under which they have actually nullified the Land Act of 1950. Hmm. Or uh, uh, if people remember that Land of act of 1950 that was that was the singular most biggest achievement of sheikh abdullah mm. so that is when land was taken away from land on uh, landholders big land land hold 
and given uh, away to tillers. Hmm. So, and uh, there is a one uh, one community in uh, Jammu and Kashmir which have ever since resented Sheikh Abdullah for that hmm. because they were the biggest landholders in Kashmir. Achha. And they were the biggest exploiters. So uh, they had been so, but, but uh, so that was this. Um, uh, I, I have some facts here. So, so that was it. 1950, uh, Jammu and Kashmir government of Sheikh Abdullah enacted Jammu and Kashmir Big Landed Estate Abolition Act, which fixed ceiling on the land ownership of 22.5 acres. Achha. All excess uh, land was vested in the government, which it distributed among tillers. Hmm. So, because this is the Maharaja Hari Singh, or even uh, before the Dogra Raj, so uh, the land was uh, just given as an, uh, given to this, uh, just as reward to those uh, who were their favorites. And they Take became you. these uh, landowners and exploiters. And poor Muslim population was uh, just, uh, they, were, they didn't have a right to land. They were only tillers. They didn't, oh. they didn't own the land they, that they were uh, working on. Take so, so then that, that uh, ceiling was further reduced in 1960, 1976, uh, again under Sheikh government. Gee. So then uh, when it was, uh, the ceiling was further reduced from, uh, uh, it was reduced to 12.5 acres in 1976. So uh, it, it was that uh, the, the objective of this 1976 uh, law was to end system of absentee landlordism, which made, uh, uh, land, made landless dealers own the land they cultivated and, and, and of their dwellings. So these these were these were these were revolution. So actually, the the 1950 Act it was a revolutionary. It was the first in South Asia such kind of uh, act that it was. Uh, and actually, this was used as a beacon for many uh, other acts in other parts of the country in India. So now, what they have done is. Uh, <clears throat> Now, what they have done is that they have abolished those acts also. And mm. then they have, uh, and then there was this, that uh, land in Jammu Kashmir could be purchased only by those who were state subjects. Mm. Now, earlier they reduced this, that anybody could become state subject with very, uh, uh, very less stringent requirements. So anybody who had resided in the state for 10 years or or uh, then there were many loopholes. Virtually anybody could be uh, acquired this uh, domicile certificate mm -hmm. in Kashmir. But now for this, they have uh, uh, taken away even that requirement that anybody can, anybody from India can purchase now land, oh. irrespective whether there is a uh, whether they are uh, they have domicile certificate or not. And if we read to get that together with this, that uh, they have abolished this X uh, of this, uh, which put ceiling on how much uh, an individual and organization can hold land. So that means they are opening Kashmir for this uh, big corporations to come hmm. and explore. Invest. Hmm. Actually, invest would be just like that, would be a benign term. It was just like this, the exploitation. It goes back to that basic, that basic in the, is that they want to change the demography of state. Mm -hmm. So these are, and then uh, along with uh, this, they have enacted another uh, law uh, where any law, any, uh, any land in Kashmir, any land, so there's no restriction, can mm -hmm. be declared of strategic importance. And that can be, uh, if army declares that any land, any piece of land is of strategic importance, so the government will acquire it for army. Army. Achha. 
and otherwise also so when uh, uh, the government can acquire now any land private mm. uh, or uh, or not any 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 property they can acquire any property so so this has virtually i mean and uh, the most uh, uh, disturbing thing about is that this is being done just by pass, passing these executive orders under that uh, act which they passed in parliament Order last time. year and and there is no state legislature hmm. so kashmiris have absolutely no say in no in, say in it huh. no huh. no say in all of those acts hmm. and the uh, next thing that is uh, uh, which is uh, what is happening is that uh in this uh, in the eclans of uh, administration there is hardly a kashmiri there is virtually no kashmiri in the, in the in the administration so those are sare, being, sare, bilkul, out number so, those are being filled by people from outside hmm. and that to non muslims uh, or at the most from people from jammu so hmm. Muslims are being uh, excluded very meticulously. Uh, this goes back to actually this is uh, people never talk about it. <clears throat> so uh, back when uh, Kashmir was uh, normal, so called, because Kashmir mm -hmm. was never normal in that true sense. Uh -huh. But when things were like. I would say prior to 1989. <clears throat> They were based on this uh, population. Uh, it represented the demography of the Kashmir. Mm -hmm. But uh, once, if you en would enter any central government organization in Kashmir, mm -hmm. there it would be just like uh, there one could see that uh, uh, Muslims are not preferred. Mm -hmm. So this is this is something uh, not many people talk about it. For example, there were these uh, nationalized banks, oh. uh, Indian nationalized banks, for example, State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank of India. So if you would enter in Kashmir, those banks, even in those pre-89 period, yes. you would hardly find uh, any Muslim there. Muslims there. Yeah. It was very there. Or any other organization, any other central government organization. They, so now what they are doing is now they are uh, creating uh, those condition at the state level. So you are basically saying that pre-89 se hi ye policy is going on that exclude no, no, no. Muslims. Yeah. No, that, that was it was just like so like when mm. uh, as far as the state government organizations were concerned, mm. I'm actually I'm making a very controversial statement. I might be in yeah. trouble for that. Uh, uh. But this is true. The state government uh, organization were fine. That was uh, uh, that reflected the demography. But when mm. it would come to the central government organization, so those were there, Muslims were not preferred. Mm. So, but now what, uh, after this August, uh, after the laws passed after August 5, 2019, so they are, what they are doing is that there's a, there's a tendency or there's an outright uh, move towards the exclusion of Muslims from Kashmir in mm. any governmental organization. So other day, uh, uh, there's a, uh, a prominent journalist, Muzammil Jali. He mm. is documenting all these acts. Mm. He's meticulously documenting. So he keeps on posting on his uh, uh, social media, um, on the social media that 
all those uh, acts uh, he's doing almost every on everyday basis all those acts which are being passed by the central government the other day they had uh, he posted this <clears throat> there was a notification for the recruitment of certain um, uh, for some positions in uh, in jammu and kashmir but only uh, it was only open to kashmiri pandits migrants or non migrants mm. so how is it possible that how is uh, this kind of law even uh, these kind of notification or even legal that when this uh, the only criteria is <clears throat> when it's open to only one community yeah. so this is something this is very disturbing aur aur ye ye jo abhi is aap situation dekh rahe hain isme कश्मीरी पंडित जो हैं उन्होंने तो इसको वेलकम किया है और उन्होंने कहा जी कि हमें तो बहुत बड़ी खुशी की बात है कि हमें मौका मिल गया है कि हम वापस आएंगे और हम वहाँ पे लैंड लेके हम वहाँ पे रहना शुरू कर देंगे आप मुझे बताएं कि आप 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 तो खुद कश्मीर से हैं और आप हिंदू हैं तो आपको और आपके और पंडित जो कश्मीरी पंडित हैं उनके पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू में फर्क क्यों है uh, i think uh, i i would need some time to explain that but uh, the thing is uh without uh, going into the merits of uh, anything in the long run even kashmir the kashmiri pandits have not benefited in any way hmm. with this <coughs> because they will not benefit or they have not benefited they will never be benefited अच्छा देखिए एक चीज है कश्मीरी पंडित तो स्टेट सब्जेक्ट हैं ही ऑलवेज स्टेट सब्जेक्ट एंड नो बडी प्रिवेंट्स देम फ्रॉम गोइंग बैक एंड परचेज लैंड वट एवर दे वॉन्ट टू एंड सम ऑफ देम हैव इवन देयर लैंड स्टिल देयर सो दे कैन गो एनी टाइम टू सो Uh, this uh, actually this will put uh, even them at disadvantage mm. because when these uh, big industrial houses if uh, if what is uh, uh, if uh, one uh, sees that the aim of the government is that to open these lands for this big industrial houses that is what their ultimate aim is so then that will put Uh, anyone at disadvantage, hmm. whether it is Kashmiri pundits or not. So, so आप आप basically ये कह रहे हैं कि उनको भी समझ नहीं आ रही है कि ये जो uh, actions लिए जा रहे हैं government of I, India. I, I, I do not make that statement कि उनको समझ नहीं आ रही. I don't think that हाँ. उनको समझ नहीं आ रही है. तो, तो फिर वो क्यों welcome कर रहे हैं? No, they they had just like uh, it's something uh, that that is something very complicated uh, issue. Hmm. As I told you. Uh, that uh, uh, act of 1950 that the when the land, land was distributed mm. so uh, they were the main land holders mm. so that is when uh, uh, that's why they opposed sheikh abdullah mm. at that time take so but but it's it's little bit more complicated complicated than. ठीक है तो ये 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 जो अभी इस वक्त हम देख रहे हैं कि पूरे का पूरा कश्मीर आज लॉकडाउन है कश्मीरी जितने भी लोग हैं उन्होंने आज रिजेक्ट कर दिया है इसको तो इसका भी कोई इम्पैक्ट नहीं पड़ेगा सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के ऊपर India has unleashed repression in Kashmir. Hmm. So, and they are just like they are. Uh, they don't. Uh, they don't give any. They don't wait for anything. Hmm. Just say, you have, for example, you have a shop. Yeah. You close that shop for one day in protest. Next day, you will have ten uh, different agencies visiting you. and uh, most likely you will be arrested for that 
So they are targeting each and every individual in Kashmir. They have an unleashed a regime of repression in Kashmir. Mm. So the protest is extremely difficult. The, the protest. So, uh, so this was this uh, one day strike. It would uh, it would hardly make any difference. No, take. So there has to be, there has to be, on, there has to be, it's very easy to say about it sitting somewhere else. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't see anything other than a complete total uprising. Yeah. But uh, that will come at a very big cost. Yeah. So this is something, the, the most unfortunate thing is that the outside world is completely oblivious to the... Uh, not exactly oblivious, but uh, they don't have appetite to intervene. This is something. Uh, what might uh, be the reason, actually? What might be the major reason? Uh, the major, uh, the major reason is that like India is a big, uh, bigger, bigger market. Bigger market, and, but now that that actually that image is now changing. Because overall, if we look at the conditions in India, those are not very rosy conditions. Mm. The condition actually uh, economy and the way India has handled this pandemic, the conditions are quite dire. Yeah. Uh, the unemployment is so high. And One of the th three slowest economies now. Oh, yes, it's uh, Don had uh, put out an article where it mm. called uh, India as sick man of Europe. Mm. Asia. But uh, but besides the besides this uh, uh, this sluggish economy and uh, outraging uh, pandemic, so it is the overall atmosphere in India, which is just like it's a it's a uh, communalized there's a intolerance. Mm. Uh, Majoritarian. They are doing in, uh, in India. They are doing the same thing what they are doing now in Kashmir. Mm. So dissent is not tolerated at all. And, and then there is this uh, open, uh, this Hindu uh, ideology being mm. promoted. And there is a, uh, uh, there is a concerted uh, campaign against, against anything uh, Muslim. So this is, this is being carried out at all India level. Oh. तो ये जो ये जो कश्मीर में हो रहा है प्रोफेसर अजीब क्या आप इसको कह सकते हैं कि ये इंडियन सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट जो है दे आर इंस्पायर्ड बाय इजरायली पॉलिसीज इन पैलेस्टाइन और अब ये कश्मीर की इजरायलाइजेशन हो रही है वहां पे भी वो उसी तरह ही उनको फॉलो कर रहे हैं उन पॉलिसीज को जिस तरह के इजरायल ने वहां पे किया है उनका भी देखें ना गाजा वगैरह में और वेस्ट बैंक वगैरह में वो आर्किपेलगोस उन्होंने उस तरह का स्टाइल बना दिया है कि छोटे-छोटे बस वो पॉकेट्स हैं और बस आपस में उनका कोई छोटा-मोटा राबता है अदरवाइज उनका कोई कुछ भी नहीं है देयर आर देयर आर देयर आर दोस अनकैनी सिमिलरिटीज बिटवीन द टू बट टू से दैट वेदर दे वर इंस्पायर्ड बाय इजराइल और बट दिस वाज द एजेंडा ऑफ बीजेपी ऑल अलोंग वेदर इजराइल एग्जिस्टेड और नॉट so bjp had but of course uh, uh, so uh, they they get inspiration from what israel how israel has dealt with palestinians so and that's uh, so and they have um, a very close relationship with uh, israel israel hmm. so there is no uh, but uh, uh, this uh, this was always uh, so like bjp bjp's forerunner was uh, johnson and uh, the Johnson came out of RSS, so mm -hmm. this is RSS. So and uh, and then uh, uh, they had this uh, uh, the precursor with Hindu Mahasabha. So that was all along their uh, the purification of race was all along their agenda. Mm -hmm. On their agenda. Mm -hmm. तो ये कितना सस्टेनेबल है ये जरा मुझे बताएं कि बीइंग एन इंडियन बीइंग अ हिंदू आप समझते हैं कि ये सस्टेनेबल है ये पॉलिसी मोदी की? I don't know now. Uh, uh, he has been in power since 1914, uh, 2014, huh. uh, and uh, then he won bigger in 2019. Hmm. And I'm skeptic he will win again in 2024, 
maybe even bigger because uh, because this is this this average hindu middle class huh. they are extremely enamored of him hmm. so somehow it is uh, the reason does not apply when one talks to them the reason does not apply huh. Huh. तो अगर अगर वो जीतते हैं अगर वो विन करते हैं तो इट विल बी अ गुड न्यूज़ फॉर इंडिया नो इट्स द हिज हिज रोल सिंस 2014 इट हैज बीन अ डिजास्टर एंड एंड ही डस ही डस ही एक्ट्स इन अ रेकलेस मैनर सो इन 2016 ऑन 8 नवंबर uh with uh, uh, three hours notice he demonetized 86% of indian currency uh, uh, uh. and that put uh, millions into uh, difficulty you right absolutely right then uh, recently in march this year uh just to uh, fight pandemic he ordered closure of the entire country with the notice of 3 hours which uh, rendered that uh, migrant worker community completely helpless and, uh, and were... many of them died actually oh it's a many is an understatement hmm. so uh, uh, if one one has to see this uh, plight of those migrant workers they 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 come from uh, places far off places to work yeah. in big centers and they eat in the evening what they earn during the day hmm. so they are not regular employees daily wagers in they are daily and very very unorganized daily workers mm. oh. so there is no written records anywhere mm. so they go uh, they go to the place of work it's at the whim of the owner of the place whether he, how many persons he wants to they want to keep for that day oh. so whatever they earn they uh, spend that on food in the evening or maybe uh, they send something back because they are uh, back home they have many dependents and when all of a sudden in 3 hours notice this everything is closed and they have they they they, they must not have food for the next day oh. so and uh, this uh, <clears throat> this ministers of that government and they were sitting in their Uh, posh living rooms and uh, tweeting everything is fine mm. so there is no problem they should not uh, these workers should not go anywhere mm. and then they were shabbily treated and then they started walking home and then uh, they had to uh, cross many states and some states would not even allow them to uh, pass through uh, those areas yeah. so they were लाइवलीहुड का भी इशू है उनके ऊपर हर वक्त प्रेशर भी है अब वो करें तो करें क्या क्या ऑप्शन है उनके पास at the moment not many because they don't have there is no legal recourse mm. uh, courts have been rendered completely ineffective courts will not issue so uh, once in a while a court might issue some uh, decision in their favor but uh, overall courts are uh, courts have been completely neutered mm. and uh, as i said that uh, protest is extremely risky it's not just because this is so this is the policy of uh, uh, this uh, this courtry of this uh, modi government which includes this uh, national security advisor mm-hmm. 
So, and this they are, they are here, they are following exactly the pattern, uh, which is- So, yeah, so here you are getting that the courts have been, uh, are neutered. Uh, so, are, are, you, are you talking about the Supreme Court of India or uh, state state courts, your provincial judiciary courts? At, judiciary at every level. Oh, judiciary at every level. Judiciary, uh, more or less uh, at hmm. every level. There are in, <clears throat> in some states, some high courts still from time to time display some independence, but mm. overall. So, for example, at lower level, the judiciary, it reflects the ideology of this uh, uh, Hindu. Uh, uh. And, uh, and, and Supreme Court is filled by uh, Modi's uh, people. Mm. So, so there is no chance for uh, any justice or any hope for in, any justice in the short in the short run i i don't see much uh, much of a chance but in the long run as i always believe that in the long run this is not sustainable it's not sustainable because uh, the arc of history is very long are are, are you pessimistic uh, for now uh, Actually, by nature, I'm not a pessimistic. Mm. But uh, in this situation, I, 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 uh, I have been uh, uh, thinking about this. I don't see any way out at the moment. There is no light at the end of the tunnel, right? Uh, right now, I don't see. But, but as, as I told you that by nature, I'm not pessimistic. But that's mm. why I say that in the long run, uh, this situation and one does not know that uh, something precipitates something can precipitate tomorrow or day after tomorrow so which might change the conditions on the ground so what you what you uh, you know martin luther king ne ye jo kaha tha ke injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere so do yes. you think it's a threat to justice everywhere in yes. india it, oh, it is actually in, in, in india is a uh, so, for example, now the India is uh, India is a place where I would not like to live. Mm. So it is uh, because the what one sees this everyday intolerance. Mm. So, like uh, that uh, freedom of uh, this uh, free expression, and that's uh, that's something very really difficult to breathe in. ये बहुत बड़ी स्टेटमेंट दे रहे हैं आपके एक तरफ जब हम देख रहे हैं कि शाइनिंग इंडिया का इमेज दिया जाता है दूसरी तरफ हम देख रहे हैं कि ये सब कुछ कहा जाता है और उस उस इंडिया में आप जैसा आदमी जो पढ़ा लिखा आदमी है जो प्रोफेसर है जो जर्मनी में पढ़ाता है वो ये कह रहा है कि मैं वहां पे रहना पसंद नहीं करूंगा it's also the way the uh, public discourse has been dis dis uh, degraded mm -hmm. uh, since 2000. Like it was just like uh, there were a few things which were already on the horizon before mm -hmm. Modi came to power. Mm -hmm. But then there were a few things uh, like in 2000 uh, after his uh, after he became prime minister in 2014. There were some things like some phrases which became uh, commonplace uh, in everyday use, oh. which one had not never heard before. For example, love jihad. Oh. It's just like uh, one would uh, one would think that where did this phrase come? Oh. UPSC jihad. UPSC Jihad, so that's a new one. Mm. And then this uh, people being linked for mere suspicion uh, that they were having beef in their uh, homes mm. and people being people being lynched for being Muslims. So this is something this happened after Modi came to power. Uh -huh. So we, we, we have we have this uh, an analogous situation at uh, in the United States, there were many things one would not utter until Trump became no, president. No, you're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's uh, something uh, something similar. So 
So, but and when uh, and uh, these even even uh, for example, there is some tomorrow there is miracle. Things change, and all of a sudden there is some uh, some new government uh, normalized government. Mm. But these things take time to go away. Mm. These things stick. The mentality, the change mentality, is hard to revert back. So, you are basically saying that in the foreseeable future, mein, uh, for Kashmiris, uh, there is no hope for now. And now, they don't have any recourse to say that they can do this, so they will do it. They have been rendered uh, in a very difficult situation. Hmm. So, because uh, like the, the price uh, for the uh, uprising is very high. Huh. So price but, wo bahut badi hai. but but at some at some level the, there has to be some kind of the, uh, it's unfortunate that international community is very actually one would think that uh, this uh, Islamic countries <coughs> would speak against such a repression in Kashmir. No, wo Islamic conference jo hai, Mari OIC, wo to, uh, Oh, yes, jagti nahi hai. Oh, uh, it doesn't wake up. Unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Uh, Rajiv sahab, aapka bohut, bohut uh, always a pleasure to have you. Or uh, I can I can feel your pain. Trust me. Uh, when whenever I talk to you, uh, I feel your pain. Because you are Kashmir. Se hai. Uh, when you see this happening, obviously you feel pain. So, and I I share that pain with you. तो मेरी दुआ है कि अल्लाह कश्मीर के लिए जम्मू कश्मीर के तमाम लोगों के लिए अच्छी ऑप्शंस क्रिएट करे वहां पे भी पीस हो दे दे डिजर्व पीस यू नो दे आर सिक ऑफ इट दे डिजर्व पीस दे 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 मोस्ट सर्टेनली दे डिजर्व पीस इट हैज बीन अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम फॉर देम अंडर इट्स बीन अ लॉन्ग डार्क नाइट फॉर देम राजीव साहब आपका बहुत-बहुत शुक्रिया इंशाल्लाह आपसे رابطہ रहेगा नाइस टू हैव यू ऑन and we'll see you again very soon thank you so much thank you, thank you sir thank you very much thank you have a good day bye bye, -bye.